My name is Kristen McKiernan. I'm sure I've spoken with many of you before. I'm a sales support specialist here at AccuZip, and I will be presenting this webinar along with Steve Belmonte, the president and CEO of AccuZip. And we are proud to say that we are one of the first in the industry to offer this type of interactive training for full service certification. We are committed to getting 100% of each of you full service certified and making it as seamless for you as possible. We'll do our best to do that during this webinar. So during the webinar, you guys are going to see Steve's screen as he walks you through the full service certification process. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Steve Belmonte, President and CEO of AccuZip, to start the walkthrough with you guys. I'll tell you right now, folks, you can't do it without your team. And Kristen has spent hours and hours and and everybody here at AccuZip on preparing for this first um, live walkthrough of many. And we're going to be doing a lot of them. So I'm very proud of her and our team for preparing this. So we're going to walk through this. Now it's going to be somewhat fast paced. So I know a lot of you are experienced with AccuZip um, and we're going to get you through this. If you were elect to not full service certify, just to give you an idea, uh, to do a flat size mailing of about 3,000 pieces, your postage today would be about $800. In January, if you don't become full service certified, that jumps up to about $1,700. So it's very important that you're taking this class. All right, so let's let's start. What I'd like you all first to do um, is go ahead and open the AccuZip software. Okay, so you either have an open create window up or just the menu across the top. If you have the open create window up, go ahead and select the very top option, which is open a list for the first time, and then click OK. If you don't, then go ahead and choose file, open list. Under the file menu, choose open list. All of you should see this screen now. It's very familiar. And then on step one, go ahead and click on the icon that says select an input file. I'd like all of you to navigate to the demo file .csv, which is located inside of the AccuZip 6 5.0 folder. So go ahead and browse to the AccuZip 5.0 folder, which is uh, by default in drive letter C, Program Files, AccuZip 6 5.0, and the demo folder. Move this up. All right. So once you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and open up the demo file .csv by double clicking on it and then check use header on the right side. All of the other boxes should be unchecked other than validate. So the only box I'd like you to check is validate and go ahead and click import. If you've already worked with the demo file, you'll get a message asking you to replace it. Go ahead and click yes. Okay, at this point, the validate records window will appear on your screen. You can leave all of the boxes that you have currently checked, leave them checked. The very important boxes I'd like to make sure that are checked are down below where it says NCOA link. If you have this option available, I want you to uncheck it. So do not check NCOA link. And then if you look up just a little bit, about three more boxes, the record status should be checked. Other than that, we're ready to move forward. Go ahead and click validate and the software will begin validating your records. So now you either have the validate records window progress meter still up on your screen after it's finished. If that's true, go ahead and close the validate records window if it's finished. And then you should be back and see your database on your screen here. The next step I'd like you to do is to choose under the support, the sort menu at the very top of your screen everybody choose pre-sort mail, pre-sort mail. And when the pre-sort window appears, listen, we're going to set up the pre-sort now for full service. Here we go. So under class, I want you all to choose standard mail. For status, choose profit. For the size, choose letter. For your weight, choose ounces and then press your tab key and enter in 0.9 so 0.9 ounces for your type I would like all of you to choose machinable next to machinable 
check print barcode and underneath print barcode choose full service IMB rates <clears throat> so both those boxes should be checked under pay type which is very important choose imprint for your tray type underneath container setup where it says type choose MM tray MM trays and then your your min and max could remain whatever it is but I have our set to 425 and 500 so I'll go ahead and type in minimum of 425 max of 500 you should uncheck pallets if it's checked uncheck it do not check include non zip plus four records do not check include carrier route level so both of those boxes should be unchecked include non zip plus four should be unchecked and include carry route should be unchecked at the top where your five digit zip code is you need this is very important you need to type in your zip code <clears throat> that is linked to your CRID so basically it is your uh, zip code that where you submit your mailing at your post office so you can just type in a five digit zip code that you use to submit mailings every day to your post office and get approved and that links to your CRID. And then underneath that, just have the very first box checked, which is your local post office. Um, uncheck SCF and the NDC boxes, which are those three there. You just want to have the very top one checked. Come on down to the name of the pre-sort folder, and let's just call the, the pre-sort folder name IMB. So the pre-sort folder name, we're just going to call it IMB because we're going to be uh, using this folder uh, to upload to Postal One. And very important, I'd like all of you to check the Create Unique. So there's your checkbox next to Job ID. If you check that box, our software will guarantee that each Job ID is unique every single time you pre-sort because from today on, you can begin doing full service mailings for all of your customers. Down below, don't worry about the save settings. Uh, down below where it says Intelligent Mail Setup, there's a hyperlink. Click on it. That will bring up the Intelligent Mail Information Setup window. We just want to make sure this is set properly so you can um, get your full service discount. So since we're doing standard mail, you only have to set this up one time, by the way, for your different classes. Go ahead and click on the check the plus sign for standard mail. When you click on the plus sign, you'll see the mailer ID listed there. If yours is a question mark next to underneath mailer ID, click one time on the question mark and then click again. So you click once, then click again, and then you can edit the question mark and type in your six digit or your nine digit mailer ID and press the enter key on your keyboard. So go ahead and type in your mailer ID, press enter on your keyboard, and then underneath service type there's an icon and there's a number next to the um, service type so what I want you to do is click on the icon double click 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 on the icon next to the number and that will open up all of the service types that are available for standard mail the most common one and we'll be using that today is 271 so I'd like you to highlight 271 and then click OK so from this point, go ahead and click on OK. And then there'll be a message window that comes up and says, do you want to save your changes? Click Yes. And let me review this real quick. For class of mail, we have standard. The status is profit, letter size. We're doing it in ounces, 0.9. Both print barcode and full service IMB rates are checked. Our pay type is imprint. Our container type is MM trays. Our min for the tray is 425. Our max is 500. We are not checking the pallet option. Unchecking include non zip plus four and include carry route. You've typed in your zip code to your post office and you've unchecked the SCF and the NDC box. The only box is checked is the first one right underneath your zip code. The pre sort folder name is IMB. You check create unique. And now we're ready to click pre-sort. Go ahead and click pre-sort. When the pre-sort is completed, 
you'll have the print pre-sort window up on your screen. Now these next three steps are very important, but simple. You do these every day. So the first thing we want to do is remember that at this point, the AccuZip software has generated the mail.dat files. So if, you, if I don't do this right now, but I want to show you that I'm going to click on this little hyperlink right here, and this opens up my pre-sort folder. As you can see, the software has generated all of the mail.dat files for you automatically. The problem is, is that we can't upload these files to Postal 1 at this point because they still need to be updated with our mailer ID and CRID, the eDoc sender CRID, and some other information like the mailing date and so on. So what I'm going to do now, the next steps that we do now will do that. We'll edit the mail.dat files automatically for you so they're ready to push to Postal 1. So you must click print tags and you can do this in any order you want but we're going to start with print tags and then when the container tag window comes up uncheck print container tag summary report check print container tags so the second one down go ahead and check that print container tags and then underneath container type check intelligent mail barcoded intelligent mail barcoded so our software is going to print the IMB on your container tags and then at the very, very bottom, those uh, set of checkboxes, the only one I want checked is create PDF. So uncheck preview, uncheck embed fonts, uncheck print printer prompt. The only one I want checked is create PDF. All right, go ahead and click print. And your container tag PDF file will be created with the IntelliJ Mail barcodes. And also, most importantly, is that our mail.dat files just got updated with the IntelliJ Mail barcode for your container tag. So the next step would be to click reports. So go ahead and click reports. When the report window appears, you can uncheck qualification report, the only report that's necessary for us and you to become full service certified is the mailing statement. Remember that because you're going to be full service certified, if you wanted to, you do not print any paperwork to take to the post office. The paperwork is only for your use, will only be for your use in preparing your mail. So what I'd like you to do is check mailing statement, and I'd like all of you to uncheck the box that's underneath mailing statement. So the box that's directly below mailing statement, do not check, the one that's indented a little bit. And then uncheck cash certificate the PS Form 8125 package, uh, packaging report. So nothing should be checked on the top there other than mailing statement. And then down below, all of the boxes should be unchecked except for create PDF. So you're just going to have create PDF checked. And then go ahead and click print. And at this point, you're going to have the mailing statement setup window up on your screen. For our full service certification, um, we do not need to fill out any of the permit holder box information at this point. So we're, not, we're actually not going to do it through this process to get you certified. So the only thing that we need that is required would be underneath the permit holder name down below where it says mailer ID of the mail owner right here. I'd like you all to type in your mailer ID. If you do not have a mailer ID that you know of, um, you can uh, leave that field blank. If you do not have a mailer ID, you can leave that blank. Underneath CRID of mail owner, that's very important. So naturally, if you don't have a mailer ID, you have to have a CRID. You know, the CRID is a customer reference ID. Everybody should have a CRID if you have a permit. So type in your CRID right there on the CRID of the mail owner. You want to type in the same CRID number over in the next section where it says eDoc Sender CRID. Go ahead and copy and paste that in there or just type it in. eDoc Sender CRID should be the same number as your CRID of the mail owner. And with the eDoc Sender CRID, that allows you to upload the files. So they link it and they gave you access so you're able to upload the files. All right, coming down a little bit further where you have the mailing date, that's going to be today's date, should be defaulted automatically. And then your statement sequence number, just type in the number one for now. 
and your payment method should already be per imprint, so that should be chosen, and the mailing permit number. We need to type in the permit number that is linked to your CRID. So it's going to be your permit number, so go ahead and type that in, and then net postage due, permit number, leave that blank. Go ahead and type in your name underneath cert certification where it says name of mailer or agent signing the form. Type in your first and last name. Press your tab key. You don't need to type in your company name at this point. Press your tab key again so you're in the phone number field. Go ahead and type in your 10-digit phone number including your area code. You don't need to include any dashes or, or parentheses. It'll type those in for you. And then for the user email, I'd like you to type in a valid email address. Only enter one. So remember your email address has to have your at symbol and the .com or .net. It has to be a legitimate email address. And then where it shows move update method, I'd like all of you to choose NCOA link as your move update method. And that's for this training. Of course, when you run your files through NCOA link at a later point, this will be chosen for you automatically. And then press your tab key one time. And where it says move update method, uh, the date, go ahead and type in today's date. So it's 04112013. So type in today's date. That's all you need to do. And there you go. So we'll give it a few minutes. The most important thing is you have your mailer ID of the mail owner, if that can be blank, if you don't have one, and then your CRID of the mail owner, the EDOC sender CRID, your statement sequence number is one, your permit number, mailing permit number should be the permit number that is linked to your CRID, then you have your first and last name, your phone number, and your email address, and then we have the move update method as NCOA link, and then today's date, 4-11-2013. Go ahead and click continue. When you click continue, that updates several files, including the mail.data.mpa and the header record and a whole bunch of other files, and now that contains your CRID and all of that good stuff. The last step is to let the post office know which intelligent mail barcodes you're going to be printing on the mail piece. So next, I'd like you to click Labels. So when the label screen pops up, your print settings window here, at the top left, underneath output, I'd like all of you to choose disk file. The only reason we're choosing disk file is because we're not actually going to print the labels, although in a real world situation, you will do your output to label format, um, or if you're going to export it to use and print in another product like variable data printing or whatever, you would choose disk file. But for right now, we don't need to uh, select any label templates or anything. So just choose disk file. And then on the right side, uh, underneath scope, I would like all of you to choose all. So the scope should be set to all. And then all the way to the right side, underneath the close button, uncheck all of the boxes with the exception of print barcode and intelligent mail. So the only two boxes that should be checked underneath the close is print, our print barcode and intelligent mail. Okay, so go ahead at this point and click continue, and it says adding IMB. So right there during that, that real brief moment, the software actually updated your mail.dat PBC, which is a file that represents every piece of mail that you've printed. So when at this point, you're either going to print this to label or export it to be printed. You don't want to go back and do another pre-sort after you've printed it because it'll generate new intelligent mail barcodes. So now our intelligent mail barcode has been posted to our mail.dat files that we'll be uploading to Postal 1 and of course when we drop our mail they're expecting uh, to see those uh, for tracking purposes um, and using AccuTrace if, you all, if any of you use AccuTrace. We have quite a few but then all your mail will be tracked as well. So go ahead and close or click cancel on the export setup. Basically, the step of clicking continue between that and the export window generated our intelligent mail barcode. So like in the small window, you can all look at my screen. If I go to the far right, I can see 
that my intelligent mail barcode was created and my IMB digits were created. That's why we do that step. And this information was then transposed down into the mail.dat files. So at this point, you go ahead and click on the close button to close the print presort window. And now that we're back to the print presort window, I'd like all of you to click on the hyperlink where it says presort path. There's a little blue link there. Click it. And that will open up your presort folder. Now it's very important that you make a note on the path that leads to this presort folder up here. And if you want to, you can make a copy of it because we're going to need to go to this path in just a few minutes to upload it to Postal One. All right, so we're going to move on now. And by the way, that's all you need to do in the AccuZip software to do a full service mailing. So once we're finished, you will be able to do a full service mailing for any class of mail. First class, standard mail, periodicals, and bound printed matter, all of them. Okay, so our next step will be to log in to the gateway. So I'd like all of you to open up your Internet Explorer. Okay, so you all should have your Internet Explorer open or your Chrome or Firefox or whatever you use to browse the Internet. And then I'd like you all to type in gateway.usps.com. I'm sorry, gateway.usps.com. Dot com and then hit enter and all of you should see this screen so what we're doing now is we're logging in to your gateway to the post office's gateway using your credentials so if you have this screen up go ahead and log in on the username go ahead and type in your username and then type in your password and click sign in okay so now we're logged in now very important because we're doing testing we have to get into the test environment. So the first thing I want you to do is underneath design and prepare, I'd like all of you to click electronic data exchange postal one. And all of you should be at this page, electronic data exchange. Scroll down and you'll see test environment for mailers, TEM. Underneath test environment for mailers, under the mail.dat mail format, take your mouse and click on go to TEM. Go to TEM. This dialog will appear, meaning that you're going into the test environment. Click OK. So at this point, we're, we're, we're going to leave this browse window up and now I'd like all of you to go to your Windows Explorer. This is your, your Windows Explorer. And I'd like all of you to browse to the C drive. So click on your C drive where you'll see the MD client Win32 TEM folder. Remember, part of the prerequisite is that you downloaded the MD client and that you unzipped it to drive letter C. So if you did that, then you should have a folder on your C drive called mdrclient-win32-tem. Open that folder and you'll see a list of files. The file name run-mdclient.bat is the one we're going to be opening. So go ahead and double click on run-mdclient.bat. And when you do that, eventually, in just a few moments, you'll get the interface for the post office, which is the Postal One mail.dat client application. This window will be used like you use our print presort window every single day. You'll do all of your mailing and all your, you know, your pre-sorting, your CAS certifica certification, your NCOA stuff, all of that will be done in AccuZip, just the way you do it every single day. You're going to use this interface here which is the MD, run MD client that we just um, just opened to upload the mail.dat files to Postal One. Then you will use the 
Internet Explorer and log into the gateway to actually see your mailing. So think of this program that we're in right now, which is the MD client, as the upload method to Postal One. So if we were to put this in three steps to break it down, very simple. You do nothing different in AccuZip. You pre-sort exactly the way you've been pre-sorting. You cast certify records and you print your barcodes, just like you've been doing. The only thing different is that we're using a full service service type versus not. Step two you're going to be uploading the mail.dat files to Postal One. And then logging at step three, logging into the gateway and checking out your mailing statements to make sure that they got them. So then you're going to just take your mail down to your post office. They've already got your paperwork. You just have to reference a job ID, which we're going to show you here in a second. Okay? So once you log in to the MD client, which allows you to upload the files, you'll see this screen first. So I'd like all of you to go ahead and click on the very top where it says job validation slash upload. It's right, it's to the right of the home link. Go ahead and click it, and all of you should see this screen. So all of you should see job validation and upload, add jobs. So click on add jobs. And then you'll get a little browse window, and this is where we're going to go now find our mail.dat files. Remember, I asked you to remember where your mail.dat files were. And um, in AccuZip, remember that little hyperlink showed you where the mail.dat files were. So I'd like you all to browse to the folder, which would be inside of your demo folder. So if you want to navigate from here, you'll just go ahead and click on Computer. You'll double-click on the C drive. Then you'll double click on Program Files, AccuZip 5.0, and Demo. And inside the Demo folder, you'll see a folder called IMB. Remember when we did the pre-sort, we named the folder, the pre-sort folder, IMB, just so we could recognize it for this class. So double click on the IMB folder, and then there's the only file that should be displayed in there is the mail.dat.header. So every time you pre-sort with AccuZip, it generates the mail.dat. You print all your reports, it updates all the mail.dat. The file that you upload to the Postal One is the mail.dat.header. So go ahead and now that you have it highlighted, click open. And now the Postal One should change to this screen where you have upload selected jobs, just validate or upload after validation. What I'd like all of you to do now just uh, because uh, if there are any errors, we can go make those corrections. So just click on the option that says just validate jobs. Just validate jobs and click validate and now all of all of it is going up to Postal One and you should have a screen that says validate complete validate complete okay at this point click on view details so when you click on view details you should see no errors so basically underneath description, you're going to have loaded all the way down. And it shows all the extensions of the mail.dat files. If you have any errors at this point, just stop and listen to the rest of the course. We're almost finished. And then we're going to help you individually after this class. So stick right with it. If you don't see any errors, that's great. So now we're going to do the real deal and upload it for real to become full service certified. So now I want you all to click on home, not home, but job validation upload again. So next to home type it, click on job validation and upload, then click add jobs. Now the folder automatically opens to the same IMB folder, open up the mail dad header. And this time I want you to all click upload after validation, upload after validation, click validate and upload. Now you have to agree and accept, so click accept agreement. And now the file will take longer. It's going to actually validate it, and then it's going to now upload all of your mail.dat files to Postal One under the test environment. You see the job ID at the top where it says file name, mail.dat? That job ID is, is important because you're all going to use that today in an email that you're sending to Postal One to let them know that you are full service certified and for them to confirm it.
So that job ID listed right there in this window, I'd like all of you to write that number down or copy it and paste it into Notepad, just so you have it, because you'll need it later when we send it, draft an email to Postal One. And now it says, it should say upload completed. Now everybody go ahead and click on view details. And all of you should see just loaded all the way down. If you don't and there's an error anywhere in here, stick with us and we're going to answer those. It is probably something very common. Either your CRID was typed in wrong or it's not linked, something like that. Okay, good. So at this point, we're going to confirm that the file has been uploaded and we can view it in Postal One. So now I'd like all of you to close the Postal One mail.dat client application just by clicking in the X in the upper right corner. And then open up your Internet Explorer or your Chrome, you know, that we're, remember we logged into the gateway. I want you all to bring that screen up. So bring up the gateway that we logged into earlier and then go ahead and click on dashboard. So on the left side, click dashboard. So now we're going to go ahead and where it shows open date, we're going to click on the date, which is probably 328, 2013. Just click on it and it brings up a little calendar. I'd like you to advance to April 11th and click it. So now you have April 11th, 2013, where it says begin. And then end, I want you to click on that little text box and choose the same date. So now you have 411 on both of them. And right below that, it shows statement statuses, choose all. So basically what we're asking it to do is show us our mailing statements that we did today. So you can come into the gateway anytime after you've uploaded you know, several jobs and you can come in and view your statements and these are the same statements that the post office will see when you go drop off your mail. So this is pretty cool. You're not going to have to print out any paperwork for the post office. There we go. All right, so now <laughs> this is awesome. So you have your job ID, which you've made a note of because we're going to need that job ID to um, communicate with Postal One and let them know that we are full service certified to confirm and then you have your postage statement and so on. What I want you all to do is click on the hyperlink for your job ID. So it says view detail of this job. So when you click it, you're going to have your postage statement ID and then below you're going to have your qualification report. So part of the full service certification um, steps by the post office is that you look at these reports just to make sure that what you pre-sorted and uploaded is actually there. So as you can see, we pre-sorted 1,955 pieces for a postage rate of 508.37. So go ahead and click on the PS number and then that your ID, that little link, and it will show you your mailing statement. So isn't that cool? So instead of printing it out, you can scroll up and down and you can see all the different five-digit level, three-digit level, AADC level. So this is similar to the hard copy statement that you normally print. Now instead we upload the file and it's there. It's beautiful. So scroll back to the top and you'll see um, a link called Dashboard. Right there below the United States Postal Service logo, it says Dashboard. Click on Dashboard. And then now you can click on the Qualification Reports link. So right there below the postage statement link, it says Qualification Reports. And then you can see your qualification report similar to the hard copy and you can see all the running totals and rate information. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so the requirement of viewing our mailing statement and our qualification report has been done. We've uploaded it, a full service mailing to Postal One, and now we're ready to let the world know and of course the post office just to confirm. And by the way, at this point, whoever is to this point and can see their statement and see the qual report, you have passed full service certification. All we need now to do is let the post office know the job ID in which you did that. And then you can do full service mailings for all of your classes of mail after this session. So beginning today, if you wanted to. So now I'd like you to go ahead and close your um, browser. And then you can close your uh, windows and get back to AccuZip. And now I want everybody to draft an email. So everybody open up your email for me.
address this email to Postal1. So you're going to type in P O S T O uh, A L O N E at USPS.gov. So type in Postal1 at USPS.gov. In the subject area, in the subject area, I want you to go ahead and type in the word confirm. The word confirm full service and then put your CRID, so put in the word C-R-I-D space and then type in your CRID number. If, so hopefully everybody remembers their CRID numbers. Go ahead and type in your CRID number. I'm not going to type mine in, so I don't want you to type what I'm typing. <laughs> so put in your CRID number and then put a comma and then put job ID and put a space and then type in your job ID, that one you wrote down. So whatever one that is, write down that job ID. Okay, and then in the body, you can put postal one at the top with an exclamation point if you want, and then comma, and then in the body you're going to put in please confirm, please confirm that you have received and validated our job for full service. Please confirm that you have received and validated our job for full service. And then below that, put your company name, actually they can see it in your email, but go ahead and put your company name. Our company is AccuZip Incorporated or whatever your company name is, just say our company name is, and then put your company name if you don't have it somewhere in your body of your email. Okay, so the subject is confirm full service, your CRID number and your job ID are listed there. And then Postal One, please confirm that you've received and validated our job for full service. And then put our company name is, and type in your company name and then go ahead and click send and now that you've clicked send you will wait until they reply to you which should hopefully be sometime today all of you that have passed and sent the email are full service certified you just it's just a matter right now of waiting until they get back to you and you're set now because you're full service certified, you will need to download, of course, the production version of the, the, what you upload to the post office. So we remember when we ran the MD client, that was for the test environment. This one right here, that was for the test environment. See, it's Tim. We will send all of you an email of, you're going to download basically the MD client for production. And then you're going to use that to upload your files instead of the test environment. So congratulations, number one, you got full service certified in less than an hour, which is unheard of. Um, but what I'd like you to do is when you do get an email back from the post office uh, stating that you have passed, if you can please uh, send us an email so that we don't contact you. Uh, send that email to support at accuzip.com. If you can send it from the email address that you registered with this webinar with, that would be fantastic. Um, and also in the subject line, just put past eDoc and send a copy of the email that you received from the post office. Just if you have that, if not, you can just put past eDoc and your company name and email address. That way we know that you are full service certified and you don't need any further assistance.